Welcome back to Julie's Ruth Boutique. We have a treat for you. We have a special guest. Jennifer from Artistic Painting Studio is going to show us how to use her metallic transfer method. Now I've been using this in a few of my projects and listen, if you haven't tried this yet, you'll get hooked. I love it. It's so much fun to do. And tonight she's going to use a bowling ball and turn it into a gazing garden ball. So make sure that you watch and you let her know how much we appreciate her doing this and make sure to use my coupon code for 10% off at Artistic Painting Studio and the link is in the description box below and go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's get crafting, Jennifer. Hi there, I'm Jen Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio. I'm gonna show you how to take an old bowling ball and turn it into a piece of art for your garden. So I've been wanting to do this for a long time, okay? And it took me a while to find a used bowling ball, but I finally scored. And we are gonna turn this into a gazing ball for some yard art. So I'm super excited about this project. So to begin with, I just grabbed this bowling ball. Uh, we did go outside because I don't like really sanding in my studio. I used 220 grit sandpaper and gave it a really good sand. I was trying to bring the sheen down so it looks matte now. And that was really all I was going for. Okay, I can see I didn't clean out the finger holes really well. Okay, a little dust in there. So once you do get this sanded down, just grab some 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol and give it a super good cleaning. And I'm gonna do some more of that because I noticed that uh, I didn't get the finger holes and we don't want any dust to get on anything. So I'm gonna clean those out as well and just wipe down where my fingers are touching. One thing about when you're trying to get a really good bond on something that's kind of a plastic material is to try to not put your hands back on it too much. So I might even end up gloving up as I move it around so I don't end up with creating a resist. This thing weighs about, I wanna say maybe 12 pounds. So it is a little heavy to move around, but I'm gonna use my gloves just to pick it up so you can see what I'm using as a holder okay this is just a roll of blue tape it's a one and a half inch roll and it is making a great platform for this to sit on and we are going to be taking our bondego in black which is a paint and primer all in one and paint on a coat so i'm going to go ahead and glove up so that i can maneuver this without getting my hands on it and it's just the oils from our fingers can cause a resist or cause something not to adhere as well. And we gotta make sure that our Bondego is adhering super well because that is our paint and primer. I'm going to paint the bottom of this first, give it a little bit of a blow dry and then flip it over so that I can paint the rest. Working with something that is round and heavy uh, was a little challenge to try to figure out how I was going to maneuver this. Okay, so I put some thought into this whole process and hopefully this works well. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to try to get a coat on the base section here, but I'm leaving enough of the ball, hopefully, that I can grab it and move it on top of, or flip it upside down, I should say. So this bottom section is on top of the tape. So we'll blow dry it real quick. And now we're gonna flip this over and then try to get that straight down. So now that we can paint the whole rest of the bowling ball. I might have to turn this around so that I can see. So the bowling ball um, was actually scored by my daughter, Ashley, on one of her junking trips. I've taught her well. <laughs> she loves to hit the thrift stores as much as I do. She knew I had wanted this to create a gazing ball with our foils, so she surprised me. Okay, so a little bit about Bondego. Like I said, earlier it is a paint and primer 
all in one and one of its main properties is adhesion. So it will stick to most surfaces, but as I did with this bowling ball, you do want to make sure that you sand your surface, prep your surface, and make sure that you're giving the Bondego something good to adhere to. If you put it on something super slick, uh, there is a chance that it might not adhere as well. And then one of the other things is once I get this whole thing base coated, I'm gonna let this set for a few hours, okay? Make sure you let it dry and dry super well. So I'm gonna let this sit for a few hours and we'll be back for more. The Black Bondego has completely dried and using my little tape holder, okay, to hold the ball, it only left a little tiny ring, so not bad at all. With working with the process of metallic foils, it is basically a two-part application. We need the foil adhesive. This is our Artsyville Embellishments foil adhesive. I am working out of a gallon. Please don't let that scare you as we do have a uh, lot smaller containers, okay? We have four ounce, 10 ounce quarts and gallons depending on the size of your project. I prefer to take it out of the bucket and put it on what I call a sticky plate. So this plate just has layer after layer after layer of foil adhesive on here. And I'm probably taking out more than I need, but I'd rather have too much than have to dig back in there again. A uh, couple of little tips when working with foil adhesive. It is not a bad idea to grab yourself some press and seal and just put this over. Let me show you guys when you have the little jars because this stuff is so sticky that if it gets stuck on the rim, which feels like this one has, okay, <laughs> um, it makes it a little challenging to get off. Okay, this one's actually looks like a brand new one. But the trick is to put this, the press and seal, over the jar first and then screw on your lid because it will make it super easy to get off. And this is a great trick, not only for the foil adhesive, but for all your paints too, because I find that there always gets some product on the rim and it's hard to get those lids back off. Okay, the foil adhesive can be used straight out of the jar or you can add a little water to it. So I have a mist bottle here and I'm just going to mist on a little bit of water and mix it into the adhesive. Uh, when I'm doing a brush application and I'm working on something smooth, this will help to just um, allow the product to brush on a little bit smoother. Uh, foil adhesive does not self-level, so that means any brush stroke you leave behind could possibly be seen and the transfer. So as I said, we're working on something that's pretty smooth. I'm gonna try and smooth out my application marks the best I can. So I'm gonna get the bottom of this done like I did with the black. I also put paint down the holes, okay? And I'm gonna try to just blow dry this a little bit and get a little bit dry before I put it on the tape hole. As you can see, when the product dries, it goes clear. And I'm just gonna try to get this on there to the best of my ability <laughs> and finish this out. So a little bit more about the foil adhesive. Um, as you can see, it does go on milky white looking, and the darker your surface is, the more you'll actually see that, and it dries to that nice, clear, shiny uh, finish. So it dries completely clear, it will be shiny and super sticky, and its process is just meant to get to a dry firm attack 
So it will transfer all of your foils to the best of its ability. And as I said, foils are a two part, okay? We need the sticky stuff so that we can transfer the foils. Uh, the foils are a metallization that are on a plastic film, okay, we refer to as a carrier sheet, and the metallization has to have something to grab it and pull it off, which is the foil adhesive. Okay, I'm just bending down low so I can see the bottom here and make sure that I didn't miss anything. If you have no foil adhesive, you will have no transfer. So you wanna make sure that you have 100% coverage. And this is just gonna turn out to be something absolutely amazing. And I'm just gonna get this finished up. I would like to let my products dry as I indicated with the primer paint that I had used. I let that dry overnight so that it had the best ability to bond and stick to this bowling ball. And the foil adhesive, I again will let sit for hours. Minimum is normally uh, 30 minutes to an hour, but I will probably let this sit for at least three or four hours or possibly even overnight so that it gets to what I call a firm hard tack and will give us our best release. And again, just double check with anything like this. Make sure you spin it around, make sure you see all the sides and that you haven't missed anywhere, okay? We'll let this dry and we'll be back for some magic. I allowed the bowling ball to actually dry overnight just to give the chance for the foil adhesive to dry to a nice, firm, hard tack. And now we get to do what's the really, really fun part, okay? So I'm gonna move this bowling ball out of the way, uh, which is nice and heavy. And we're gonna grab our foil that we're gonna use, which is our blue pebbles. And this is so stunning. It is a holographic foil, and I think this will just make the most beautiful gazing ball. So working on something round and awkward shape is a little bit more challenging, but I'm going to just grab this ball and I'm going to turn it upside down and disengage the tape holder, okay, which definitely did leave a little something there, but this is going to be the bottom, so we should be fine, okay. And I'm just going to wrap the bowling ball. There's no pretty way to do this, no perfect way. It's gonna have wrinkles and crinkles, okay? And I'm just gonna cut off the excess here so that we can work with this. And we'll see if it actually covers the whole thing. It doesn't look like it's going to, so it looks like we're gonna have a little open spot there and as well on this end, so we'll have to do a little bit of fill in and I like to use a plastic scrub brush when transferring the foils okay so the shorter the bristle the normally the better because they're gonna give you a nice firm scrub and you just want to scrub everywhere I'm gonna try to stay off some of those real defined edges so that maybe they won't be shown. And then as you are transferring, anywhere there might have been a really big wrinkle, if you just put the foil back and open that wrinkle up, it'll normally fill in any of those spots that didn't transfer. Oh my gosh, this is looking so great. How fun is this going to be? And again, any place there was a wrinkle, I'm just trying to lay that part of the foil back because the metallization is still on the back of the carrier. Let's see if I can get it to transfer in those spots. Now, you can also use your hand and rub because the heat from our hands will also help transfer, especially when we're coming back and trying to do a 
fill in area. When I'm trying to check both sides of this as we go around here. So it's going to take a few minutes for you to get this completely covered. But like I said, this is like the total satisfaction part where you've done all your prep, you put your layers on, you've let everything dry. And now you get to do what I call the peel and reveal and see how gorgeous this is coming out. And you'll be able to see so here on the carrier, where you can see where the metalization didn't transfer, those were the wrinkles. You can normally put that right back into those spots and just rub again in those areas and get that part to transfer. Now I went over black on purpose because I knew if there was a little black peeking through this foil, it wasn't gonna take away from uh, the design or the color. Uh, black normally, will hide a lot of imperfections, especially with such a dark foil color that we are using, because this is the blue pebbles. Pebbles comes in blue and bronze, so there is a couple of choices. bowling ball actually had a little dent so I'm having to like scrub down in that lower area. around this thing. <laughs> and yes, it's rolling all over the place. <laughs> but just think of all the options depending on your garden and the colors that you have planted. Create a gazing ball that will go with your garden and all the beautiful colors that are featured there. Now also, if you ever feel like the, the foil is sticking really good, instead of just trying to rip it off, shake it a little bit, and that'll help release it as well. Okay, I think we're just about to the other side and then I'm going to show you guys how to go back and fill in everywhere that it didn't transfer okay even after you tried to like open up the wrinkles and fill those areas back in I'm going to show you how you can also finish filling in everything okay so I'm going to get rid of that big sheet I'm going to cut off a smaller little sheet here that I can control because we also have a section on this side to fill in where the foil did not completely match and cover. And then let's do the other side that's still open. We don't want that to get stuck on my table because it's just paper down there. Oops. 
Okay, so if you have areas where you can still see the black, and if you're not wanting to see much black at all, then just take a fresh piece and go over it more with your hand and a soft rag because what happens now when you're going back and doing that fill in is you have foil transferring to foil mainly. There's just a really narrow little area maybe that there's a little bit of your base color showing. And if you use a scrub brush, you can possibly create some scratch marks. So we don't want to make any scratch marks. You can also come in, let me get this on. So anywhere the foil didn't transfer 100%, there still be that tack, okay? Because remember, the foil adhesive never dries beyond a firm tack. So I'm putting that pla I'm putting the foil back underneath it, so it won't stick to my table, okay? And you can also do this pouncing technique, which will also help fill in any of those negative areas that just didn't get transferred. I'll have to tell you guys, this is super satisfying <laughs> to actually do this. I love the, the pouncing part. Just make sure you have a fresh piece of foil underneath your finger or thumb, whatever you're using. And with me, I'm just gonna continue to allow this project to kind of roll around until I feel like I've got everything covered. And these little areas are probably only going to be noticeable if you're really up close. Most of the time, I don't think anybody's ever going to notice that there is a little bit of your base coat showing as long as you've used a color underneath the foil that complements the foil itself. Okay, let's move that around again. So if I wanted this to look probably as flawless as possible, I could have used a blue paint underneath that would have been very similar to the blue foil. And then all these little negative places where the foil didn't transfer everywhere from a wrinkle or a crinkle, you would probably never even notice. So that's another option. I like transferring over black because I really feel that it gives a lot of depth to the foil. So that's one of my favorite colors to actually transfer over. Okay, I think we're close here, guys. Okay, once you fill, you have covered everything, okay? And it might take you a few minutes to work on it and critique, so just take your time and have fun with it. We want to seal this. And I did end up with a few little imperfections for where it was sitting on the roll of tape, but that is going to go directly down onto our gazing ball holder. So I'm not worried about that, but we do want to protect this. So I do recommend that you grab a clear coat that is exterior rated with some UV resistance because that is going to help it to uh, withstand the elements of putting it outdoors. So once again, you're just going to brush this on. Yes, there's a lot of brushing in this project. <laughs> Find one here. And again, the easiest way to do this is start at the bottom because this is the part that's going to go back onto our tape holder and allow us to finish the whole thing. And then nobody's ever going to see the bottom anyway. So if there's an imperfection or two towards the bottom of this, project, we're just not going to worry about it. Make sure you hit it with a blow dryer. You want to let that dry a little bit before you flip it over. And you definitely can give it more dry time than that. I'm just trying to get this done fast for y'all. Oh my gosh, look how gorgeous that is. <laughs> this is going to be super fun. Okay, so the only thing you need to do is just finish it out. I did pick gloss top coat. Uh, to make sure that my foils stayed 
super bright and shiny. So make sure you just put a couple of coats on here so that you'll be able to enjoy this for many, many years. You can find Julie's affiliate link in the description box below, and that will also have her coupon there for all of you. Thank you so much, Julie, for having me here as a guest. I totally appreciate being able to share my love of foils with all of you.